Hello everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to Trail Talk. I'm so glad you could join us today. Uh, we are coming to you live from the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center and we have a very special guest. Um, Miss Sandy Pogue is here and she is the state president of the Oklahoma Home and Community Education. What do you call yourselves after that? Is it group, group? Uh, organization, club, okay. group? Uh, okay. We don't really, that's it. I noticed it's uh, an incorporated, but it is. Uh, I, yeah, I was, I never knew if you called yourselves group, club, organization. Yeah. Group. So, yeah. Anyway, you guys, rather than all of those words, you may be more familiar with just seeing the letters O H C E. Um, especially Correct. if you've gone to a fair or um, a, have seen any kind of publicity about a sewing class or it's a, a lot of things like that, which Sandy's going to tell us about all of those things. But um, Sandy, welcome to Trail Talk. Thank you. I'm Appreciate so the invitation to be with you. Absolutely. I'm so glad you could be here. And you're from Velma, right? Yes. Born and raised. We were talking before uh, we went live and Sandy has lived in Velma. I'm going to just say basically her whole life. Uh, right. And so uh, we're really excited that a Stevens County girl is representing the state of Oklahoma with this great organization. Um, so Sandy, a little bit about you first. Um, you were born and raised in Velma. Um, is, is that where you met your husband? Is he from there as well? He, his grandparents lived here. His mom and dad both graduated from Velma, but he actually grew up in the Ada area. Well, he lived in Duncan until uh, about the eighth grade, and then they moved to Ada, and he graduated from Bing. But yes, we did meet here because uh, my dad happened to be combining his grandfather's wheat, um, and that's when we met. Okay. And we, we had met once previously before that when we were younger through a friend, but um, that after that, that's when we started dating and dated uh, uh, for two years before we got married, yeah. Okay, well, um, so you guys have just really uh, lived here, invested your lives in this area. Um, yes. As a, as, as a young woman, were you familiar with the with OHCE? Or yes. Okay. Tell us about that. I, I'll give you a little history background. Um, my mom and dad, my, my parents are Lloyd and Sheila Ely, and I grew up on a ranch in north of Velma. Um, grew up in 4-H. My mom was 4-H volunteer uh, leader um, for uh, my whole life and, and long past when I was out of high school. Um, and she was also a member of this organization, but back then it was known as Extension Homemakers. Um, and uh, she was actually state president herself in the years 78 through 80, 1978 through 80. Um, at the, coincidentally, at the same time, I was state 4-H secretary. And, um, and so, yes, I, I grew up going to meetings when I was little before I started school. We I went to mom with with her to the meetings, you know, all the time and played around and got to enjoy the snacks and <laughs> all those things. And, uh, and then after Kent and I got married um, in 1979, I joined uh, as a young homemaker myself. Um, and then I decided after a couple of years, I was taking uh, classes at college at East Central part-time after we got married and then I decided no I needed to go to work and and let's build a house and start a family and so during that time period I was a member and then after I finished my degree I uh, uh, taught family and consumer sciences at Velma for six years before I became the school counselor um, and um while I was teaching home, what we know of as home ec back then, uh, we had a, a group called Young Homemakers of Oklahoma. And um, we, I we had a, a group that was that, but then we also started a, a Velma group again for extension homemakers. In the meantime, then they decided to change their name just much, much like FHA changed to FCCLA. Uh, 
Extension Homemakers became Oklahoma Home and Community Education. They pulled out of the national organization and we became uh, incorporated as a group on our own. And, um, and so we, uh, I, I was a member again at that time, but then as I became counselor, it, I, life was just too busy. I had two boys growing up and all their sport, sporting events and all of that. So I, I let go of my membership again at that time. So after I um, resigned from school in 2009, no, 2008, um, my mom began to talk to me about rejoining. Um, by this time, it was already OHCE. And so in January of 2009, I rejoined and I've been going strong ever since. Um, it's a, it, the things that, that drew me to this organization, besides the, my family history on it, um, are the fact that it's based on education and service. Um, the, the whole organization was established, although there were local groups, groups across the state before we became a state organization, the state organization developed in 1935. And oh. the, the, the purpose was to educate homemakers on new inventions and new things, new research that was being done by Oklahoma State University to help the family um, and, you know, to, to evolve the family as we know it today. All right. Um, the other, the other arm of that is service to the community. Um, and, and that's always been a big draw to me. Uh, I love going on mission trips and things like that. And so anytime you can help another family, another human being, another individual, then that's a good thing. And so, so this group, one of their main goals is to do things to help educate and to help just financially or with needs that families have and so that was a big draw to me so I was glad to be able to join again in, in 2009. Right and so uh, 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 go ahead. Join, so, so when you join do you join a, a, the state organization or do you join a more local organization? Yes. You join on a local level, but when you pay your dues, which are only uh, for Stevens County is only twenty dollars, uh, twelve fifty of that goes to the state organization. So you're automatically when you join a local group, which we have four different local groups in Stevens County. When you join a local group, you automatically become a member of the county organization and the state organization. Um, there's also a national organization and an international organization that we are we also become a member of, which the the national organization is called Country Women's Council USA, and the international organization is called uh, Associated Country Women of the World. Now, not all of our members are women are are women. We also include men uh, in our organization these days, and we have a few teenagers that are our members as well. Um, so it's not just grown women who are mothers that they can wow. be a part of our organization. Wow. So, um, that yeah, is that's very interesting to me. So, um, so since 1935, even though the name has changed, the basic mission of the organization has stayed the same. Correct. Correct. And, um, and so as far as like service goes, Give me an example of what kind of service projects you're you're talking some, about. Some of the things that we've done um, in our county uh, that just come to the top of my mind. Uh, one year we before the youth shelter uh, closed down, we made quilts when they built the new new home. We mm -hmm. made quilts for the beds. Um, for each bed, we made a quilt. And then um, a few years ago, we made privacy covers out of old sheets for highway patrolmen to use when there was a fatality in a wreck. Uh, sometimes we don't donate money or we donate um, items to other uh, things that we have in the county. For instance, right now, my group, which is the Sunshine Group, um, is every, every other month we collect, we collect a different item, food item. So um, I, I may have had this backwards, but let's say for, uh, on the even months, we bring canned goods or 
uh, shelf stable goods that we can put in the blessing boxes in Duncan and Velma. Oh. Um, and, and so, you know, it's, uh, cereals, uh, snacks, canned goods, those kinds of things. And then on the other months, say the odd months, we collect um, crack, the cheese crackers or the peanut butter crackers to give to Gabriel House. For, so they'll have afternoon snacks for their kids or to send home with them uh, for the weekend or whatever, or for the summer months when they're not in school. Yeah. Right. So you said that these are $20. Is that per year? Do you yes. Yes. Um, so, right. Um, so you said there are four groups in Stevens County. Um, yes. Do you guys do things together? Or do you just yes we, yes we have uh, one of the other uh, good things about the organization are the leadership skills that people can uh, develop in themselves wow. and and so yes the four each of the four groups have their own officers and then on a county level we have county officers and we have committees so a committee let's say cultural enrichment committee we uh, before covid we were doing uh, one day of mystery trip and and so uh, the cultural enrichment committee would come up with this trip and it would be a secret. And then every, all the members in the county that wanted to go would we would load up into cars and and follow each other to this location, you know, and it, it's a great way to learn more things about your state or your area that maybe you wouldn't do on your own, you know, plus it's a lot of fun just to socialize that way. Um, uh, family issue. We last year, one of our projects was to work with um, Oh Caris Pregnancy Center, and we we helped our educator, county educator, uh, uh, was doing teaching classes on parenting at at the center, and so each day of four of the four different days that they were taught. Each group took a day and they offered a lunch like uh, sandwiches and, and dessert and drinks for the moms who came for those classes. Um, and so that's how we kind of uh, cooperate together to do a project. Well, I, I'm I tell you, I had no idea that you guys were that service oriented. I am yeah. really impressed with all the different, it sounds like um, you guys, are kind of open to just where you see a need and yes. whatever size or your you know whatever size need your group can take can handle you guys sure. just in and do it yes that we try our best impressive. we try our best we have seven different uh, program areas but the main one the main ones i would say that are need uh, you know where there might be needs are uh, family issues healthy living uh, uh, cultural enrichment, and that's more educationally based, I would say, than than maybe needs based. Um, uh, resource management. That's an area that we try to do things in, even if it's just within our own homes. You know, right. it might be water conservation or trash. Uh, you know, working on trash issues or. Um, those kinds of things. So, okay, that that's interesting to me. So, as a as a group, would you um, like do some kind of a project or just an education? Uh, a lot of times, uh, on resource management, a lot of times it is just educating people about you know resources, how to how to handle resources. Maybe it's a class on money management or on uh, at our state level. Uh, one of the most popular workshops that we've done at the state meeting, our state conference, have been on estate planning. Uh, what to do uh, before someone, you know, one of the spouses dies. What do you need to have in place at that, you know, before that happens? Um, and so that's been a very popular thing, whether it's a trust or a will or, or whatever. Um, and, and that falls under that resource management area. Right. Okay, so when you when you have a workshop or I, you mentioned at the state 
meeting, but do you do you do workshops for just the general public? Yes, yes, and and a lot of times those will be posted. We have a Facebook page for our Stevens County OHC E group, and um, a lot of times those kinds of public uh, invitations will be will be put on that Facebook page, and. Um, and I, we haven't done any on a county level, but if somebody requested it as far as resource management or estate planning or anything like that goes, then we could for sure set something up like that on a county level. Um, the most recent thing we did where the public was invited was a sewing class, a basic sewing class, and they made a boho bag. And that was just last week. Last week was OHCE week, and that's how... That's how our group celebrated was by offering a sewing class. Okay, so I saw that um, there were actually uh, one of the families, two of their daughters who went and made bags. They uh, have been kind of regulars here at uh, an art program that we do. And uh -huh. Their little bag, their pictures with their little bags, and then I saw on the I went to the Facebook page, the OHCE Facebook page. Right. I saw that you know you guys had posted that. So so when you have a class like that, is there a cost for people to attend it? Some sometimes it depends on if they if we are, if we're providing the supplies or not. For that particular class, they brought their own fabric, and so there was no cost. But like the one of the other very uh, popular things. In fact, that we just keep getting people requesting it and the county keeps doing it uh, are the barn quilt classes, which are painting squares of wood with a, a quilt pattern. Wow. Um, and and so uh, I'm, we've already offered that at least four different days this year. Um, and there's a request for more. So I think there's another one, Brenda, Brenda Gandy Jones is our, um, uh, our educator for our county uh, mm -hmm. extension educator. She's the, and she's the director for our county extension office. Um, and so uh, all, they, all they need to do if they want to sign up for that is to call the extension office. But there is a price for that. And Honestly, I don't remember what that is. It's minimal. It's just to cover, I think, the cost of the paints and stuff. And I, and I could even be wrong about that, but they could get all the information they need from the extension office. Well, if we can put some information in the comments here, we can put, um, you know, contact the Oklahoma Extension Office. Okay. And, you know, yeah. the, the OHCE Facebook page, Get put some of that information on there. So right. you can find that, out, find that a little easier. Um, okay, so um, <clears throat> just to give people kind of an idea, there are four different groups in Stevens County, and about how many people are members of those groups? Um, we, in Stevens County, we have about 60. Uh, we've had several new members recently, so I just don't know the exact number, but it's about 60 members. We're, we're down um, after COVID, statewide, we're down. Um, and so we are seeking new members um, and, and would love to, to see some new people join. But in, in, in my group, Sunshine Group, we've just had, I think, four new people in the last couple of months. So that, and I think a lot of that is due to the barn quilt classes. Well, very nice. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that because um, the, it's, I think that the services you provide and the, the education, the information, the, the uh, opportunities, you know, to create all of those kinds of things. I, I think it's important that groups like yours, uh, keep on keeping on <laughs> you know yes. I, I don't ever want to see those dwindle down although you right. said you're lower I'm curious and I think I mentioned this to you um I'm very curious about uh how you try to appeal to or interest uh younger people in your uh, in, into joining your group because I feel like um, sometimes the interest 
doesn't seem to be there for those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. so, so what kind of ideas do you guys have? Or are you like, you know, trying new things? Kind of talk about that. It is, it is um, hard because so many young women work mm -hmm. um, and most of our older women don't want to meet at night or on the weekend. And so in Stevens County, we really, we used to have a couple of night groups, but they uh, eventually dis disbanded or whatever word you want, terminology you want to use. Wow. Um, so it would be nice to have a new evening group that would be more uh, available. There is a Zoom option um, a, uh, for on the state level. Mm -hmm. um, and if there was enough interest for a Zoom um, meeting time, then you know I think that we could we could make sure that happens. Um, I don't know. One of the one of the counties in the state, Dewey County, which is Sealing, um, up in that northwestern, you know, south of Woodward, that area. They have a lot of young women, but I think they meet on Saturdays. Um, and so that that seems to be more doable for, you know, for the young women, because um, evenings are busy, too, with ball games. You know, so many kids are involved in sports that that's hard, too. So that's that's our biggest struggle is, is dealing competing with all of those things that young families are involved in. Right. Um, like how many ty times a month do you meet? Just once, um, but that's just for the regular meeting, you know, uh, we meet, my group meets the first Thursday of the month. All of our Stevens County groups meet the first week of the month. Um, okay. Now, if there is a, you know, a project being done, a service project or just a fun project, mm -hmm. then uh, that may be a separate day. Mm -hmm. uh, the county council, that's what we call our county meeting. Um, it's usually uh, at, on the third or fourth week of the month, but we only do that three three times a year. Ah. So it's not, it's not a huge time commitment mm -hmm. um, for people. Uh, and, and we would love to see some younger members. There, we, there seems to be since COVID a uh, more of an interest in some of those old skills like canning, gardening, um, raising chickens, you know, those kinds of things that they can do without a lot of land um, and, and help their families survive, you know, um, mm -hmm. save on money, uh, yeah. that sort of stuff. Well, so if we can reach, if we can educate young families on those kinds of skills, then, then that may be a way for us to reach them. Right. Well, I'm, I'm, I really hope that you guys are able, you know, to do that, that sort of thing. So, I mean, we've kind of covered some of the local things. I did have a, a wonderful opportunity to attend uh, just briefly um, a, was it a regional? District. A district meeting. Um, a couple of months back, six weeks ago, something like that, um, where I was a little, I performed a, a character that I do here at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center. And um, anyway, it was, I thought it seemed very well attended. It was a large group was gathered there. And um, I did notice that, um, you know, there, seemed, there was a variety of ages of women there. And um, mm -hmm. it's kind of encouraging to me to uh, to see that size of a gathering. But like on a state level, do you guys do statewide projects that the local groups do participate in or can have the option or kind of how does that work? Yeah, n not typically. Um, typically, um, we we have the district meeting. Now, I say that not typically. When COVID started, uh, a statewide project was making masks that got started by one or two people wanting to learn how to make masks and it blossomed and and our organization made statewide over 75,000 masks oh my to give away yeah to wow. give away to fa family members or to you know uh, uh, hospitals, uh, right. different things. Right. Um, and then uh, a few years ago, we made pillowcases 
um, that was on a district level, uh, the Southwest District, uh, before our meeting, we put out a pattern for pillowcases for children in hospital hospitals to have. So we donated these pillowcases to um, Integris or to the Children's Hospital in Oklahoma City. Those, those kinds of places for them to use with children who were battling cancer or, you know, had long-term illnesses. And so that was a district project. And I don't remember the number that's been several years ago, but there were several hundred uh, pillowcases that were made for that. I mean, our ladies, when you give them a task, they, they take it and run with it, you know. Um, yeah. And so we, we have district meetings in March every year. Each, there are four districts in the state and each district meeting is in March. And then we have one state conference, which is in the summer in July. Um, and, that, and then so anybody, any member from the state is welcome to, you know, pay to come to that. Mm -hmm. um, and at each of those meetings, we have workshops where members can learn new skills. Um, one of the popular ones this, this spring was Fiber is Fun. It was so popular that I never got to attend it because it was always full by the time I got to the room. <laughs> so uh, fiber is fun that and that's talking about healthy eating healthy <laughs> living committee did fiber is fun and and it was quite popular I mean I met the young lady the specialist from OSU who taught it and she I bet she did make it fun and I I'm, I'm hoping to attend that we're going to offer it again at the state meeting and so I'm hoping to attend it then but uh, yeah so, so it's what um the dues you said you know a, a percentage goes to the state the rest stays in the county I county yes. so um, what do you guys do with those funds um it it goes to pay for um any projects that we want to do on a county level mm -hmm. and the same thing at the state level we have we pay for the state officers and, and uh, committee chairs, we pay, well, the committee members too. There's about 60, close to 65 people who are on the state board. And oh. when we have board meetings, we pay their way to come to the meeting. We pay their mileage, we pay for their hotel room, we, we pay for their meal for that day. Um, so that's what a lot of that goes for um, and, and to get us started on the state conference expenses. Um, then um, the, the county dues goes to pay for all those projects that we do, those service projects that we do. Okay, so um, you guys do fundraising besides dues, members yes. dues. Yes. Yeah, the dues are not enough to to cover all of the expenses that we have. Um, and so we do our fundraiser, our only fundraiser in the county is uh, the pie sales at the fair, which now is the time to be get re getting ready for the fair. Um, so and that's not you don't have to be an OHCE member to enter the fair. Um, we would I, I'm usually in charge of the open class. That's what we call it for people who are not in OHCE. Um, open class crafts, uh, adult crafts, and um, and I would love to see double the number of entries we had last year. We were down in entries for the fair last year. Yeah, and it's kind uh, of still a weird COVID time. Yeah, yeah. Last year in August, yeah. so yeah, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully this year we're we're people are past that and and are making things to enter, and um, and so uh, of course that always happens in August. I don't off the top of my head have the exact dates, but they could also find that out from the extension office. And uh, fair books probably will be coming out in June if they want to look get a fair book to look and see what possible entries they could have. Oh, very nice. So, canning, fresh vegetables, crafts, clothing, all of those things, crochet, uh, crochet and knitting. Uh, their their booth was pretty full last year. They so people who had stayed home and crocheted or knitted during COVID 
Uh, and that's kind of made a popular uh, comeback with young people, I believe. It really has. There, you, I, on social media or Pinterest, it seems like there's always some cute little crocheted something that yes. they're making. So I've, yes. been, I've been kind of impressed by that. My grandmother had a bag with her and she sat and cro she would just crochet all day, every day while she was, right. I mean, wherever she went, she carried one. Around. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I think that, I think that's pretty great that they are, right. that's kind of making a little comeback. Um, I agree. So whenever you, uh, the, are the pies that you sell for the fundraiser, is that how that works? You, yes. Are yes. We, the ones that are entered in the competition? No. Or other pies? No, the, that's separate. The competition is separate. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the pies that we sell are homemade by our members. Uh, we each make two a piece. Um, one year we had to make three. I might have been last year, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully for our members' sake, they'll go back to two pies a piece. Right. Um, and, and they're homemade and um, they sell really well. Um, I think we charge three. I'm not on that committee, so they, I, I, they might be changing it, but I think we've been charging three dollars a slice in the past uh, of course, couple of years. The ingredients going up, you know. Right. Right. Can, I mean, can you really put a price on a slice of homemade pie? <laughs> no, no, and and they can buy the whole pie if they. We have occasionally people who come in and they want to buy the whole pie, the whole so that's thing. also a possibility. Right. Yeah. Right. I'll, listen, I love a good pie. I, I love almost every kind of pie. Yeah, there's, there's something about them. Um, so, Sandy, if you wanted to um, kind of give a little pitch to try to get some someone who watches this interested in joining your organization, kind of what would you say to them? Oh, goodness. If you are interested in um, fellowshipping with a group of people who are interested in continuing their own education as well as educating uh, family members uh, in doing service for com the community, um, then we sure would love to have you join us. Um, the, you know, the dues are minimal. Uh, I know if you join Lions Club or Rotary Club or one of those others, you're going to be paying a whole lot more in dues than, than we pay for a whole year. Um, and so um, there's something for everybody in our organization. There really is. Maybe your interest is in uh, cultural enrichment and where you want to learn about your ancestry or about uh, our state or about a, a country in another part of the world. That, that can all happen through our cultural enrichment committee. Maybe you want to learn um, how to, for your family to eat healthier or how to uh, incorporate exercise into your life that can be done through our healthy living um, committee, uh, projects through that committee. So there, there really literally is something for everyone. And uh, um, we, we just really enjoy each other's company. Um, our, so let me name the four groups in our county. Okay, yeah. So, Sunshine, um, Gleaners, is, uh, and I think nearly all of their members live right there in Duncan. Okay. Uh, Sunshine is a, is a combination, um, uh, uh, mostly Duncan. But some Velma, some Marlowe. I don't know that there's anybody from Comanche on our in the, in our group. Then there's two that are considered Comanche groups. One is called Oak College, and one is called Comanche Homemakers. Um, and um, so four groups of lovely women, uh, a few men. We could use some more men. Um, we we don't discriminate on anything. Um, so we would love to see a variety of people join our group and, um, and help us out in, in the endeavors that we take, undertake. Well, I just think uh, your organization sounds fantastic. I don't know what I thought OHCE did, but I really have learned a lot about it. I mean, it, it seems like that 
the the educational programs that you offer i mean that that really is a very wide slate you know it of, is uh, things that people could find an interest in mm -hmm. and maybe maybe you find out you're actually interested in something else that you didn't even realize right you know, by attending uh, some of the meetings and i love it that even though historically the organization was uh women that now men can be a part of the groups as well and i, I i'm sure they add a, an extra level of um knowledge or experience sure in, you know in a different way from the way a, a woman has experienced some of those things so i I really, it seems like you guys have made, uh, you've adapted and, and, oh, you know, I don't know, just kind of seen the benefit of change and kind of you're going, you're moving along as, as time goes by. And there are different things that for different people, I, I really right. love that so much. Right. Our, yeah, I, I guess I need to also stress that, you know, these educational things, they don't just happen. Um, OSU people are doing research all the time on different topics, uh, even in the family and consumer sciences realm, you know, mm -hmm. and we have specialists in nutrition, specialists in family issues, all at Oklahoma State University. And so when when a topic comes up that somebody wants to learn about, we have somebody we can tap into and a, a lesson is created. And, and the leadership part of it comes from our members, they volunteer to do a lesson on whatever the topic is. We have a yearbook that when you become a member, you get for the whole year and the vice presidents in the fall of the year for the next year, start planning these lessons out. And so the month before the lesson is to be taught, that member will go to the extension office to be trained so that they can come back and teach their local group that lesson. Mm -hmm. And and Brenda, our educator, as well as some other educators from counties around us work together to come up with this whole list um, that, the, that the vice presidents can choose from on topics. Okay, so, so one month we might- Every year that every um, group has the same book and so they're going over the same lessons each month yes, yes. that's cool yes. I like that. within within our county you know now mm -hmm. a different another county will be doing a whole different they'll do their own lessons for that okay. for that year okay. but but within our county all four groups do the same lesson taught by different people and mm -hmm. so they might they might concentrate on a different area of that topic you know but but the basic lesson is the same for all of us, yes. Well, that is, I, I like the way that it kind of unifies, a, you know, an area. Yes. Gives people a chance to, you know, interact and talk about what they learn versus what another, you know, right. the other learned. If you're familiar with each other, you know, have interactions with each other. I I really, I, I can absolutely see why you um, have, have been a part of this organization, you know, right. even though it was off and on for a majority of your life. Yes. Um, as, a, as an old teacher, you know, the education part of it, it, it means a lot. I, I was looking to see in my planner if I had our next county council meeting. That would be a good way for anybody who's interested in becoming a member to come and meet people and kind of see what we do at a county council meeting because our local group meetings are very similar to that uh -huh. and um and and they can always find me there it's the last week of june but i don't have the exact day in there i'm thinking it's tuesday but they could find out through the extension office uh, okay. exactly what day it is but i'm thinking it is june 28th um, and it would be at the fairgrounds. Um, so that would be a good way for them just to come explore and see what we're all about. We always have the meeting in the morning, have lunch together, and then in the afternoon do a workshop. Okay, so it's kind of a full day then. Yeah, we're that's, usually through by 2.30, something like that. That's, I mean, that, that's, that sounds like a great opportunity. So hopefully some folks are circling that day on their calendar 
and going to go check it out. Um, I, I, I really, I am so glad, Sandy, that you could be our guest on Trail Talk today because this has been a very educational <laughs> um, uh, episode, and um, I, I really am. Uh, I again, I'm just very impressed with what your organization does, and that it's a, a statewide organization. Did, you said it's also um, national and international. Right. And so we, forever, we don't, we don't go to national or international meetings. I, I members could, if they wanted to, but typically we don't. Now our state president uh, go and some others who are involved in that national organization, they do attend uh, last fall as state president. I went to Illinois to attend the CWC USA meeting. Um, but it, a, a typical member doesn't do that. Our organization really is, is set up where we don't depend on the national organization. It's really separate. But as a member of OHCE, you're also a member of that. Right. Um, well, I mean, that's so, nice. It's yeah. nice to have like an umbrella organization kind of at the autonomy of what fits with your state and then what yes. fits with your county even. That's autonomous too. And so, that, right. you know, that's really uh, nice to be able to kind of uh, fine tune the opportunities or education uh, lesson, thing, education lesson, that's kind of redundant. But um, well, no. Whatever you're going to teach, and uh, so that I, you know, that's a. I think that's a great way. I, I'm very impressed with the structure, though. Um, you know that you have a board, and uh, and that it's, you know, just the way you guys um, meet and have these committees and everything. I, I mean, that has to have something to do with the fact that it's been around since organized since 1935. <laughs> Right. You know, uh, groups don't just stick around like that uh, <laughs> doing some good things and they have some structure to them so I think that probably speaks to that quite clearly thank you yeah um anyway Sandy thank you very much I hope that people have enjoyed this as much as I have and uh when we say goodbye on um trail talk we always say happy trails so are very you good ready? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Happy trails. Happy trails. <laughs>